Our lesson today is to be able to uh, identify and use adjacent and vertical angles. Uh, some definitions that we should already know. Uh, acute angles are less than 90 degrees, right? We see that here. This is a right angle. A right angle measures exactly 90 degrees. We have obtuse angles, which measure more than 90 degrees. And we have our straight angles, which are equal to 180 degrees. Some other vocabulary terms we have to be familiar with are uh, first adjacent angles. Adjacent angles are two angles uh, that share a common side and have the same vertex. Right? Adjacent angles have a common side and a common vertex. So if we look here at angles one and two are adjacent, here's angle one, here's angle two. They share this common side here. Right? That's the common side that they share. And they also have a common vertex. There's the common vertex. So adjacent angles are angles that share a common side and share a common vertex. 2 and 3 would also be adjacent. 3 and 4 would be adjacent. 1 and 4 would be adjacent. 2 and 4 would not be adjacent. Right? They have a common vertex, but they do not share a common side. Uh, next we have vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are on opposite sides of intersecting lines. Also important, vertical angles are congruent, meaning they have the same measure. So if we take a look at this uh, diagram here, angles 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. They're on the opposite sides of intersecting lines. And also angles 2 and 4 are vertical angles because they are on opposite sides of intersecting lines. All right, let's get to our next uh, page here. When we talk about naming angles, we can name, name angles several different ways. All right, we can use uh, the vertex as the middle letter and a point from each side. So if I take a look at this angle here, there are several different ways that we can name this angle. We can name it angle X, Y, Z. The vertex of the angle has to be the middle letter. We can also name it angle Z, Y, X. Once again, the vertex of the angle being the middle letter. We could also name an angle just by its vertex, so we could call it angle Y. And finally, we can use a number to name an angle. So this would also be called, or could also be named, angle 1. Right? It is an acute angle because it is less than 90 degrees. Right? So let's talk about some ways we can name these angles. So first, if I'm naming the angles uh, by... Uh, using the points on the angle it would be angle ABC right because the vertex right here has to be in the middle letter but I can also reverse that and name it angle C B A once again right this vertex here has to be the middle letter I can name it just by the vertex and call it angle B or I can name it using a number and call it angle 2 and we could do the same for each one of these Right, this angle here, yes, it is obtuse, right? And this is a right angle, so I should have named that right angle. Let's do that. This is a right angle. Right, that's a right angle. Right, this here is an obtuse angle, but I can name it angle angle R S T. We can name it angle T S R, right? Making sure that this vertex here is the middle letter in our name. I can name it just using the vertex, so angle S, or I can use uh, the number to name the angle and call it angle 3. This is an obtuse angle. All right. An obtuse angle measures more than 90 degrees. All right. And finally, we have this straight angle here, which we know measures 180 degrees. Once again, we can name this angle the same way. Angle L M N angle N M L angle M oops didn't come out too good right call that angle M and we can call it angle 4 it is a straight angle All right it is a straight angle all right let's take a look at our next page here All right if we want to name a pair of adjacent so, angles uh, if I'm naming a pair of adjacent angles Right, I'm looking at angles that are on opposite sides of intersecting lines. So these two angles uh, would be, I'm sorry, uh, we're looking at adjacent angles, angles that share a common side and have a common vertex. 
So let's take a look at this angle here. All right? We'll start with this angle. All right? Angle A, B, F. Right? So let's talk about this angle here. And if I want to name some adjacent angles to this, all right, so let's start with that angle. Angle A, B, F. A, B, F. And once again, we're naming it with B as the vertex here. Well, what's an angle that's adjacent to it? Well, this angle is adjacent because it shares this common side here and it has a common vertex. So that would be angle FBE, right? Angle FBE, right, would be, they would both be adjacent angles, right? Also adjacent to angle ABF, right? Let's find another one. Angle B, ABF would be adjacent here to this angle, angle ABC, right? Once again, they share a common side, side AB, and they have a common vertex, vertex B. So angle ABC would also be adjacent to that angle, all right? all right? And let's see, if we talk about vertical angles, a pair of vertical angles, let me erase this here, right, and start over. If we look at a pair of vertical angles, vertical angles are on opposite sides of intersecting lines. So this angle here and this angle here, they're on opposite sides of intersecting lines. More importantly, though, they have to be congruent. Right? Because these two angles here are on opposite sides of intersecting lines, but they're not congruent. So they wouldn't be vertical angles. These angles are on opposite sides of intersecting lines, and they are congruent. So a pair of vertical angles would be angle ABF and angle uh, what CBD. Angle CBD. All right. Come down here, and we uh, you know, do the same thing. Let's talk about figure one two pairs of adjacent angles. All right. So let's start with this angle here. All right. And I want two pairs of adjacent angles. So we have angle XWY and I need a pair of adjacent angles to that. Well, XWY would be adjacent to this angle here. That would be XWV, angle XWV. And XWY, angle XWY would also be adjacent to this angle here right because they share a common side and they have a common vertex so that would be angle y w z all right and if we need some vertical angles right these are adjacent let me label that the red will be adjacent right adjacent angles vertical angles vertical vertical angles would be on opposite sides of intersecting lines so a pair of vertical angles would be uh, let's see X W Y angle X W Y would be vertical with angle V W Z angle V W Z right these two angles would be congruent to each other and are on opposite sides of intersecting lines right we'd also have these two angles would be congruent so we'd have angle what oops wrong color angle V W X angle V W X would be vertical with angle Z W Y alright and you guys could play around with number two on your own time so just to recap let's identify these angles as uh, adjacent vertical or neither angle two and five well here's angle two here's angle five angle two and angle five are on opposite sides of intersecting lines so they'd be vertical. I'm just going to use a V for vertical. Angle 4 and 6. Here's angle 4. Here's angle 6. Right There's 4 four and 6. They're not on opposite sides of intersecting lines. And they're not adjacent to each other. So that would be an example of a neither. All right. Angles 3 and 4. Here's angle 3. Here's angle 4. They are next to each other. So they would be adjacent. And we'd use an A for that. Next, we have angles 5 and 6. Here's angle 5. Here's angle 6. They would be adjacent because they are next to each other. Next, we have angle 1 and angle 3. They are not adjacent to each other, and they are not on opposite sides of intersecting lines, so they would be neither. And then finally, angle 1 and angle 4. They're on opposite sides of intersecting lines. They'd be vertical angles. All right. All right, let's continue. We want to be able to use those properties of vertical angles and 
adjacent angles to you know solve some problems so we take a look at this set of intersecting lines here and we want to be able to find the find the value for this letter X here well we notice that these two angles are on opposite sides of intersecting lines which means they are vertical angles and more importantly vertical angles are congruent so we want to write an equation that shows that or represents that situation so to represent that situation we'd write something like 2x plus 6 is the same as the 80 degrees right because they have to be the same because vertical angles are congruent so to find the value of x we have a two-step equation we would subtract 6 from both sides of the equation they cancel we're left with 2x is going to be equal to what's that 74 and when we divide both sides of that equation by 2 x is going to be equal to 37 all right let's look at our next example notice we have another set of intersecting lines but our angles are not on opposite sides of intersecting lines right the information that we're given right are these two angles here which happen to form this straight angle here when we have two angles that form a straight angle we know that their sum has to be 180 these are adjacent angles because they are next to each other and the sum of those adjacent angles has to be 180 degrees so we write an equation that says that so the 15x angle plus the 15 degree angle has to have a sum of 180 once again we have a two-step equation we want to solve that two-step equation by subtracting 15 from both sides of the equation they cancel and we wind up with 15x is going to be equal to 165 and when we divide both sides of that equation by 15 right we wind up with x is equal to 11 all right, all right we'll play around with a couple more of these right if we look at this next example angle x and angle and the 70 degree angle they're on opposite sides of intersecting lines so that means that they are vertical angles and they are congruent right so that means x has to be 70 degrees as well all right this next example we have two adjacent angles right but those adjacent angles create or form that 90 degree right angle so we know that the sum of these two angles has to be 90 degree uh, 90 degrees so we write an equation that says that so we write x plus 4 plus the 31 has to be equal to 90 right so we add these two we simplify this e equation so we have x plus 35 because the 31 and the 4 is 35 that's got to be equal to 90 we subtract 35 from both sides of the equation and we wind up with x is going to be equal to what's that 55 so x is equal to 55 we check it right is 55 plus 4 which is 59 is 59 plus 31 equal to that 90 degrees yes it is so I feel pretty good about that answer all right we'll try a couple more of these this next problem I think is pretty is interesting because we can do this problem a couple of different ways all right first if we want to find the value of x right here's x and we want to find the value first I can start with these two angles right because this angle and this angle are on opposite sides of intersecting lines we know that they are vertical angles vertical angles are congruent so I set this angle equal to this angle and I write an equation that says that so we write 2x plus 2 has to be the same as 130 two-step equation we use the inverse operations so we subtract 2 from both sides of the equation wind up with 2x is going to be equal to 128 and when we divide by 2 on both sides of the equation we get x is equal to 64 all right but there's also another relationship here that we can see all right and I just want to point that out and do the problem a little differently we also have this relationship we have this angle and this angle form or create this straight angle here right so we have these two adjacent angles these two adjacent angles create or form this uh, uh, 100 degree angle so I write an equation that says that so the other equation we could write to find X would be 2x plus 2 plus the 50 has to be equal to 180 right simplify these terms we have 2x plus 52 is equal to 180 so we subtract 52 
from both sides of the equation. They cancel. So we left for 2x is equal to 128. And when we divide by 2 on both sides of the equation, we still wind up with x is equal to 64. All right? So we can actually do that problem a couple different ways. All right? If you look at this example here, right, we see that these two angles are on opposite sides of intersecting lines. So they're going to be congruent because they're vertical angles. So we write an equation that says that. So we write that the 2x plus 4 has to be equal to 100. Right? They have to be equal to each other. Subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. We get 2x is going to be equal to 96. We divide by 2 on both sides of the equation. And we wind up with x is equal to 48. All right? And uh, this last problem here, right, I see that this angle here and this angle here, they are uh, next to each other, so they are adjacent angles, but they form this straight angle here. So we want to write an equation that says exactly that. So we have 5x plus 115 is going to be equal to 180. We want to solve that equation for x, so we're going to subtract 115 from both sides of that equation. Wind up with 5x is going to be equal to, all right, what's that going to be? 7, 10, that's 5, that's 6, 65. And then when we divide both sides of that equation by 5, they cancel. x is going to be equal to, what's that? 13. All right. All right, almost done. All right, our last, uh, last question here, if we want to draw a pair of vertical angles with a measure of 40 degrees, right, we want to use a protractor to do so. So i got to bring in my uh, protractor here. Right, let's see if we can find a protractor. Okay, uh, let's do protractor. Pro, oops. Let's delete all that. Protractor. Pro. Protractor. Protractor. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay. Let's use protractor. Okay. Good enough. We'll use this protractor here. So if I want to draw uh, a pair of vertical angles, I first start with a segment. So we just draw a segment here, straight segment. And then we want to measure, bring that over here. All right. I'll put a vertex in the center of that segment and then I adjust my protractor so that the eyepiece is right here right, is right there and I want to adjust my protractor so that I have my segment going through zero it can be going through the zero on the right side of the protractor or zero on the left side of the protractor Right, let's use the zero on the left side of the protractor here. Here it's pointing to zero, and then I have to go 40 degrees from that zero. Right, 40 degrees from that zero would be here. So I need to next take my ruler and draw a segment from this point to this point through that 40 degree mark. All right, and then let's get the protractor out of the way. Right, we're looking at this figure here. Now, to draw a pair of vertical angles, we need intersecting lines, right? So, if we need intersecting lines, I simply have to take my ruler and, let's say, I need to extend this line, right? And by extending this line, I now have intersecting lines. I know that this angle measures 40 degrees, and I know that that angle measures 40 degrees, right? We can put arrows at the end of our line, and we're all set, all right? Well, I hope that's been helpful, and uh, you know, that's the lesson for today. We'll see you soon. 